The Protestant pastor Beatrix Spreng has a small congregation, but a huge task. In Joachimsthal, in the eastern German state of Brandenburg, almost a quarter of the population voted for the right-wing populist Alternative for Germany, or AFD, party in the last elections. The AFD is the biggest opposition party in Germany's parliament. The Berlin bishop Markus Dröger says that Christianity and the AFD are not compatible. But many congregations are reluctant to enter the conflict. Not so Beatrix Spreng, who has been fighting the far right for years and isn't about to give up now. Whenever I had to go in, I'd see all those youths sitting on the steps. I'd clench my fists and tell myself I would manage to get past them. I always did. But sometimes I really had to brace myself. I used to do karate, so I did have a few tricks for remaining stable. That helped. I think it's good when girls do that. Yeah. Beatrix Spreng is well trained in combating right-wing extremism. Years ago, she was able to rid her small parish in Brandenburg of new Nazis. Now, once again, she's fighting right-wing populists and their anti-refugee rhetoric. Many people think it has nothing to do with us. We live in Germany and we don't want any foreigners here, they say. I heard that just a few days ago. They said, what's here is for us Germans. We worked for it, but we don't achieve anything alone. The family of humanity is bigger than one country. Despite her preaching, the far-right Alternative for Germany party garnered over 20% of the votes at the last elections. They probably didn't come from her congregation. But she has to encourage churchgoers to maintain their resistance. Nationalism doesn't come from God. To only think about ourselves, not about others. This selfishness, competition, all this incites injustice. We're all familiar with these driving forces, so we have to change them with small things. Not an easy task. Here the extreme right keeps a low profile. Joachimsthal is one hour away from Berlin. It has 3,500 inhabitants, and hardly any of these are immigrants or of immigrant descent. The AFD is inconspicuous. There isn't a constituency office, not even a notice board with information. The other political parties are equally absent. If anyone is doing anything at all, then it's Beatrix Spreng's church. Most locals refuse to say anything on camera. Off-camera, some of them roll their eyes and say that the church is much too open. Online, it's another story. There, the populists are very present and loud. Local party members have accused the church of launching a political campaign. They're agitating. Agitating. These people, who also live off German taxpayers' money, you can't even withhold it. You have to pay church taxes with your hard-earned wages. There is no mention of the fact that in Germany people can choose to leave the church and not pay taxes if they want. What they're saying is just nonsense. What do you think? Right-wing extremists have always been anti-clerical. Not only against our small parish. What's clear is that our faith says that God created all people equal. That contradicts their beliefs, so they can't like the church. Spreng's boss, the Berlin bishop Markus Dröger, says that Christians shouldn't be in the AFD. 
I agree with him. The AFD are such populists, and sometimes they contradict themselves completely. If you read the program, so many things are unclear. But the people who gather and shout xenophobic slogans, well, they really don't belong in our faith. Have you personally heard such slogans being shouted? Well, we're known for being against them, against right-wing extremists. We get postcards saying things like, there's no more room for foreigners, for example. We get that sort of thing. What's the solution? The parish's hardcore members meet over a meal. They know that there won't just be idle chit-chat. And here's some jam that the kids bought. Amazing, shop-bought jam. The focus is not really on the food, though. The idea of the informal meeting is to draw up a strategy to deal with the rise of right-wing populism in Joachimsthal. It's in the heart of our society. Our church community is dealing with it, but we also have to get involved. We have to take the next step. We have to work with young people. Our kindergarten has 70 children, and with teenagers, wherever there's a democratic process going on. We've got about 60 youths that we do music with. But it doesn't mean that we can get through to the extremists, the people proclaiming these things at family gatherings and such like. The question is how to get through to them. It's always about social envy and racism. That's what we have to fight against. We also have to work more with people of immigrant descent, as much as possible. Some think that xenophobia is rising because there is so much public debate about immigrants. They say it's important to listen to the locals, to people who have had problems since the fall of the Berlin Wall. There are so many stories that are not being told, and I think that this not telling, this keeping everything below the surface, means that things are building up in people, and that's why they go to the AfD or elsewhere. I think that even some of those who vote AfD are listening to us. At least we're in dialogue with them. That's better than nothing. And it's not as if there are huge fights here. There are always discussions. And it would be worse if we stopped talking altogether. A few years ago, nobody talked. And that was worse in a different way. Everyone knew that there was right-wing extremism in the heart of society, but there was no debate. But there were demonstrations at the time. In 2010, the right-wing extremist NPD party used to march through Joachimsthal. Later, this new Nazi sat on the town council, after being convicted of setting fire to a Holocaust memorial. The atmosphere was oppressive, and the church and its pastor were openly targeted. There was some aggression, of course. Now we can laugh, but we counted the incidents at the time, and there were 14 of them. And what happened? Well, some windows were broken. Once they wouldn't let us out of the church. They bombarded us with snowballs so hard that it was impossible to get out. Twice they broke into the parsonage and took everything. And they desecrated things as well. Tore the songbooks, Bibles, broke candles, that sort of thing. The violence reached ahead when some young Berlin musicians, including immigrants, performed a concert against right-wing extremism. When the concert started in the church, some people who looked like right-wingers went up to the gallery and started swearing and shouting. And the insults turned into assaults. More and more new Nazis turned up. Beatrix Spreng tried to bring the young musicians to safety. We all got into the car and they started rocking the car from side to side. There were youths at the front and back of the car and they were rocking it. Inside everyone was crying, shouting, holding the doors. 
There were some people there who didn't look like right-wingers. They weren't monsters, just normal use, even nice ones. When I told the council, they said, that's the son of so-and-so or so-and-so's daughter. We have to do something about this, they said. What they did was to create music groups. Six bands and three dance groups as an alternative to joining right-wing gangs. And the neo-Nazis lost ground in Joachim's time. But at school, some still voice extremist sentiment. We hear these cliché calls, foreigners out, when we try to speak up against it, we get labelled too, but we keep on trying. Are you scared? I'm not. Using music in the battle against the far right. The Joachimsthal pastor would like to see colleagues in other parishes get more involved. Perseverance is the most important thing, staying true to one's ideas. But if you notice you're scared, you should step back a bit until you find friends and allies again. Beatrix Spreng has many friends in Joachimsthal, and she knows she can count on them in her battle against right-wing extremism.